situation thinking that why were this people who claimed themselves to be the ummat muhammadi observe and maintain them themselves to be the followers of the one last messenger of allah claim their book to be the unchanged quran are today at this point of time divided into so many hundreds and thousands of mazhabs firqas groups and subgroups he stressed on this that may, it is most probably due to the fact that they have long strayed away from the true path of guidance of hidayah that the messenger of allah brought with him so many centuries ago he stressed also on the fact that if we were to ask the people of a Medina of 1400 years ago what their goal and who they were and what was their vision in life we would receive only one answer to this question but today if we ask even 1000 people the same question he stressed that we were bound to find no less than a thousand different answers why he pondered on this he came to this conclusion that this is their belief the kida the true concept about islam has become so diverted so different from what the messenger of allah brought so many centuries ago that today it bears no resemblance what it was the answer he stressed they are no longer in the correct path on the hidayah that Rasul Allah brought so many centuries ago instead they have mapped out ways or paths for themselves or are following the paths that others have mapped out for them as a result he said when we look about the whole lot of muslim population from the forest of the philippines to the arid mountains of afghanistan and the deserts of morocco we find a giant sloth of creature unmoved by any manner of insult or injury yet these these are the same people who were once the masters of this world and teachers in every field of science and technology in fields of arts literature music science and medicine yet then how did we get here today to a point that we can go on debating endlessly on the fact that if, whether it is haram or halal for a woman to thread her eyebrows or if our ablution our wazu is complete if all the hair in the nostrils are not wet worse still if we were to ask the same thing to four different imams of different mazhabs we would find some conflicting answers to the same question yet allah tells moments to be united to hold on firmly to his ruju to his rope and differ not from each other this was a people that have been forever extol the virtues of solidarity of unity of striving in the way of allah pulling the stem and all their efforts together until all the injustice and persecution in a society have been obliterated the life of our messenger of allah and his companions are replete with such instances and the stress he has emphasized on unity on solidarity we have all but forgotten the inhuman circumstances he overcame the blood and sweat he and his companions shared to bring a society where peace prosperity security and an utter sense of harmony prevailed we do not remember that the rasul allah's declaration that soon enough a woman adorned in gold jewelry will travel hundreds of miles all by herself without having to fear anything except allah and wild animals he said this at the time when persecution on himself and his messenger and his companions were at the peak yet history tells us that it was not long before this time such a time came to pass also it is interesting to note here that the messenger of allah did not stress on the fact that it would be a moment or a muslim woman to enjoy such peace and such freedom it would just be any woman how many of us do realize today that the islam is based on humane treatment on fair treatment and on the basis that all men are equal in the eyes of the lord 
The Islam we see preached and practiced today is one that is of based on personal piety and carrying out certain rituals only. Whereas the Islam we saw so many centuries ago guarantee peace and prosperity and most of all security for one and all regardless of their personal faith. At the final pilgrimage, Rasul, the Messenger of Allah, declared once and for all that the Arab has no superiority over the non-Arab and the non-Arab Arab has no superiority over the Arab. Similarly, the white skin or the light skinned persons have no authority or superiority over the dark skinned and vice versa. This was the most comprehensive and ancient universal declaration of human rights announced almost 1500 years ago. And today, standing at the 21st century, these people have the audacity to call us backward and uncivilized. remember that the true teachings of our messenger and his companions were for up till a hundred years during and after the messenger Allah's life on earth he his companions his the people who were with him established a society that was based on security on peace and the fair treatment of all people would roam the streets with camels laden with food to look for people and the sense of security was such that in those society they did not need to find to close their doors at night when they went to sleep or even the courts of justice went without months seeing a criminal case filed. This was Islam our messenger of Allah and his companions took up as their life's mission to accomplish. As we look around us today, do we see any reflection of that kind of security and peace anywhere on this world today? Are we even made aware that the true form of Islam is that and not the internally fighting, feuding, undisciplined lot of people that call themselves Muslim today? When we talk about Islam and our past, we are told that all people who have no future talk about the past. We want to be let, let it known that it is not because of uh, we are old and we do not have a, some anything to look forward to that we will talk about the past. When we talk about the past, it is to let our younger generation know, to let, make them aware of who you are and what your goal in life should be. We are a people of about 180 crore human beings have collectively amnesia. We do not remember that we have been doing for a thousand years, for a thousand years from the time the messenger of Allah returned to his creators. It seems we woke up a millennium later to find ourselves enslaved and sadly I accepted our lot as that. But my father said that my messenger of Allah is no leader of any enslaved people. He is not the leader of any enslaved people. Was the leader of the people whose ascension was made to bring forth peace and justice for equality and fair treatment for one and each and every human being on earth, not depending on their color of the skin or their right of birth. <laughs> the Islam we see today based is mainly ritualistic and mostly whereas man is a social creature whose need for every aspect of life must be addressed. This is where the complete code of life which has to be Islam needs to be established for sustainable peace, prosperity and for security for all. Just as the true idea concept of the true Islam has become perverted and disillusioned. Today we find that the idea of who women are, what their role in society should be like, and what their status in Islam should be, is also is misrepresented and misunderstood. <laughs> However, only one look at the life of our Messenger of Allah is enough to shed light on the fact that the women of early Islam enjoyed unrestricted freedom and access to every sphere of life and in every aspect of social behavior. We do 
not remember that the Messenger of Allah not only enjoined but made it compulsory for men, women and children, for everybody to seek knowledge, to learn and to read, write. How can a people whose first verse, whose first revealed verse was Ikra, to read, now actively promote keeping a half of the population bereft of education? In some Muslim countries, even in this century and date, we find that women are being subjected to marginalization and they are being told that they do not need to step out of their houses or seek education. Whereas we find that in the life of the Messenger of Allah, he not only enjoined, he actively motivated women to take part in the Friday congregations, in daily ritualistic congregations, in the pilgrimages of Hajj and Umrah, and even in the dangers of the battlefields. The feat of um Umm Ammara at the Battle of Uhud is one that Messenger of Allah himself congratulated on. And who can forget the glorious feat of Hala, who set off all by herself to free her brother Zarar from the clutches of the Romans. We, our children, even we, do not have enough knowledge about our past, for which is the reason that we cannot build a comprehensive idea of what Islam is like and what we can do to bring it back to its glorious state. The Messenger of Allah, first when he set up a hospital of sorts in the city of Medina, first thing he did was he made a woman a woman, Rufaida, to be the administrator of that hospital. In the time of Khalifa Omar, the control of, of markets were women. In every aspect and every social need where women could exercise their right to freedom, they rose up to the occasion and they showed their mettle with diligence, with expertise and with intelligence. And now if arise a group of clerics in the 21st century who say that it is haram for a woman to stay out of, to keep step out of their houses. We say, how logical is that? If our messenger of Allah himself did not restrict our movement to mosques, to places of work, to battlefields also, how can we accept their decree that our iman, our faith becomes spoiled if outside men see us? <laughs> Then we say our faith, our faith is not a child's toy that can be snatched away or so easily spoiled. Our faith is the firm belief on our Allah and his messenger that we will obey none except him and his messenger. Our faith is that, that the moments of this earth have been caused to arise to bring all goodness and bountiful, to bring everything that is bountiful for this earth and to forbid everything that is evil and harmful for mankind. This is the message that Hezbo Tawheed brings to the people of this world. This is the message. This is the firm conviction that when we obey Allah, when we stay within his limits and his tenets, then it's the time we can say that yes, we expect help from him. Only when we say we obey him and nobody else. And then is the time that we can see the true reflection of Islam in the eyes of society and in the eyes of men. I urge you all to take back with you the true message of Islam that you have heard today. Inshallah, we will see you soon again, Inshallah. Thank you all.